Proverbs chapter 13 Contrasts of Righteousness and Wickedness again Continued A wise son hears his father's instruction He'll listen to what his father will say If we be wise sons of God We will listen to what our father says And when we don't We're not wise But a scorner Remember him from chapter 1 Heareth not rebuke. So a scorner is an opposite of wise. He will not hear the father. Especially in rebuke. A scorner heareth not rebuke. It goes in one ear and out the other. We reference Acts 28-27. A man shall eat good by the fruit of his mouth your mouth has a lot to do with your conduct but the soul of the transgressors so the man is not a transgressor in verse 2 for the soul of the transgressor shall eat violence so a good man is referenced in verse 2 versus the transgressor. Violence. Have a good meal of violence today. Enjoy it. He that keepeth his mouth quiet, shut up, guard, guards his mouth. He that keepeth his mouth keepeth his life. Wow. That's an interesting thing. Life depends on your mouth, and you can shortchange your life by your big mouth. That would be an interest. I didn't go into it, but that would be an interesting story. Look at how, in the future, how people in their mouths have ended their life. But either keeping his mouth, keeping his life. That means you gotta keep your mouth quiet. When you open up your mouth all the time, you, you, there's no light. But he that opens wide, big mouth, his lips shall have destruction. And again, Matthew 12, well, verse one of the verses 20s, in the 20s, I believe it is, speaks that every idle word you will give an account, saved or lost. Solomon speaks much on big mouths. Guarding your mouth. James speaks about the tongue. Right, here's another one that's not in America. The soul of the sluggard desires and has nothing. That is not true in America. You say, well, why don't you just shut up and, and stop preaching about welfare and stop preaching about America? When America gets right, I will stop preaching her sins. You want a revival out there, and you've got a country that is in violation of the Bible. There are churches out there that will give sluggards food and clothing and what needs you without them working. The Bible says a slugger is to want and have nothing. That's what the Bible says. You know, there are people all over the world who, who have died today because they had nothing. And they died in poverty. It's a fact of life. Death. The wages of sin is death. Well, what about these countries and all that that have nothing? You mean like India? They start they starve, they die in the streets of starvation, and they got a whole bunch of cows running around, they don't have hamburger because of their religion. If you were to kill those cows for hamburger 
and meat, they would not be hungry. Don't send no money over to India to feed the starvation. They've got plenty of meat over there. Well, that violates their religion. Well, that's a religion that needs to be violated. Because I, the Bible says Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus sat and ate meat and bread. So see, Satan will starve you with a bunch of hamburger running around. But the soul, the diligent, shall be made fat. And that is something that the middle class person today, the one that does right, is dying. He's going to lose everything. And they're going to give it to the poor. A violation of Scripture. A righteous man hateth lying. And we talked about uh, lying in the last chapter. But yet, he goes with Santa Claus. He goes with calling out with an with a imaginary illness and perverted Bibles and what have you. But a wicked man who is not righteous is loathsome and cometh to shame before God at the judgment. Either or, saved or lost. You can be wicked and be saved. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know how a man would turn from the love of God. Because here's a righteous man and here's a wicked man. And again, there's no middle ground. You're either righteous or you're wicked. Righteousness keepeth him that is upright in the way. So, see, righteousness will keep you. It will keep you going. It will keep you strong. It will break all the winds of time. The Bible likens men to trees. There are trees that withstood storms and snow and sleet, all kinds of weather, and that tree is still standing. And there are trees in California, man, they burnt down to the ground. And with the with God has designed and created those trees that when the fire strikes them, seed comes up and another tree pops up. Some of us has to go through the fire. But we will still be upright in Christ Jesus' righteousness. Jesus told them, he said, listen, God is not the God of dead. Then he said, I'm the God of Abraham. I'm the God of Isaac. They're alive. They're well. If you're a dead tree, it's not Christ. If you never had fruit, the Bible says a Christian is a fruit bearer. If you never had fruit, and don't give me artificial fruit and wax fruit and plastic fruit. To say this prayer. You're hiding. You're a deceiver. But. Pay attention to the buts. Wickedness. Overthroweth. The sinner. So righteousness keepeth him that's upright away. But a wickedness overthrows the sinner. And it's still a sinner. You're still in your sins in the wickedness. There is that maketh himself. Now verse 7 is a weird verse. All right. There is that which maketh himself, maketh himself rich. He goes out. He goes to college. He gets himself a good career option. He goes out. And he gets in the career and he makes money and yet has nothing. Wait a minute. Well, I got a bank account. I got the most expensive car. I'm in the most expensive company and all that. And I don't have nothing. And there it is. Here's the opposite. There it is. There it is. That maketh himself poor. 
yet has great riches. Oh, wait a minute, that that doesn't. Somebody scrambled with those verse right there. They got it all messed up. What did Jesus say about the widow woman when she cast in her two mites? He said they cast in all their abundance, but this woman gave her all. Who did Jesus praise? He praised the woman for giving her all. Second Corinthians eight nine and six ten. Listen, we give in this family not out of abundance. But it is one of the top things that we listen. The first check I write every month is our offerings and tithes. That's the first one. Then the missionaries. I don't get bomb. I don't get to the end of the bill list. And, okay, now all right, I'll just give a dollar here and a no, 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 no. They are right there in the budget. And we, yeah, we could take that money and we can do whatever we want with that money. It's it's our option, but we cheerfully give it to the Lord without grudgingly, and we're rich. I don't know how much, I'm not going to display it, but the money that we give to the Fellowship Track League, I don't know how many tracks that can print, but you take that over a whole year's time, the tracks that get out, what we give to, to the missionaries in Poland and Thessalonica and uh, uh, Sierra Leone, that's not much we give, but with other people who give, it comes out to be much. Now a rich man, he'll he if he get he'll put it on his IRS form and all, and he doesn't get nothing. He'll stand at the judgment seat of Christ or at the great white throne judgment, nothing. Works burnt up. But if you make yourself poor and give unto the Lord, He'll bless you. And I'm not talking about you give the Lord ten dollars, He'll give you ten thousand. I ain't talking about that. God may give it to you in the thing of crowns of lost souls, helping fellow Christians. So verse 7, it, it, it's an opposite of nature. But then again, we go against nature. We go against the world. The world strives for money. We strive for Jesus. And verses in Luke 16, Matthew 19, Luke 12, 1 Timothy 6 is the great thing on money. You can have all the money and be dead poor. The ransom, the ransom. Of a man's life are his riches but the poor heareth not rebuke money talks a rich man can buy his way but what about in the ears of God what about getting your life off the worldly and getting your life on the heavenly? The poor will be heard of God more than the rich. I think the rich man went into hell and the poor man went into Abraham's bosom. You know, James says that in the tribulation period, I mean, it's even worse than the camel going through an eye of a needle for a rich man to get saved. It's not impossible. But Jesus said, with God, all things are possible. But it's I'm telling you, it's awfully close. A rich man will tend to trust his riches. Now there are some out there like J.C. Penney who was rich and served the Lord. The light of the righteous rejoices. You rejoice in the light of the Lord Jesus Christ, in Christ's light and in the righteousness of Christ. We rejoice. But the lamp of the wicked shall be put out. Life. There's no oil. 
There's no Holy Spirit. Those virgins that, that didn't have enough oil went out to get more and they came back and they were shut out. If you don't have the Holy Spirit in your lamp, there is no life. And it will never run out in the church age. Only by pride, there's that pride. Let's see where I got the note on this. Only by pride cometh contention, struggle, contest, quarrel. Contest? I've told you over and over, pride is never associated with God. Let's try this verse again. Only by pride cometh contention, contest, struggle, quarrel. But with the well advised is wisdom. Chapter 10, verse 12, 15, verse 18. Well advised, you seek out you, you, you get people from answers. Rehoboam tried to do that, but he just, he switched the other side. He got the wrong advice. So he didn't get wisdom, but only by pride cometh contention. Now, why are we stuck on 10? Why are churches not listening to verse 10? You, you, you probably say, well, what are you talking about? Only by pride cometh contention. Struggle, contest, quarrel. So why do you keep reading that? Because when my son went to a Christian camp, and when we had in a church a couple vacation Bible, wasn't there a contest? Wasn't there a struggle for Team A, Team B, Team Water, Team Sand? Yay! We won! Yay! We're the winners! We're number one! That's pride. We got the most trophies! We got the most points! We got the most on the temperature the thermometer thing in our church! Yeah, you guys are losers. <laughs> we want more souls in our church than your church does. We had more attendance in Sunday school than your church does. That's a contest. And that brings pride. And God is not happy with pride. That's why I kept reading that verse over and over and over. Because it goes against vacation Bible, it goes against these these uh, these camp for children, and they have games and stuff like that. You're supposed to be working together. You're supposed to be helping other Christians and and working with them, and then working with you, all for the perfection for Jesus Christ, not for trophies and not for yay. We're number one. There are no teams. Find me where Paul or anybody in the book of Acts set out, you know, the numbers game and the ribbons game. Now, Peter, James, and John, you it will be versus me, Silas, and uh, Timothy. No, no, no. It's wrong. It's wrong! I don't care where you are, what church you are. Having contest brings off pride, the Bible says. Contention. That's what the Bible says. That's what you just read. Read it over and over and over and over and pray, 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 pray. Wealth. Go back to riches. Wealth. 
You know, you could be rich and have pride and, and, and the struggle for the a corporate ladder and, and I'm higher than you and you little pea brains down there. I won't give you much so I can have more money. and Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, we can do that, pride. All right. Wealth gotten by vanity. What's vanity? Worthlessness. Lotteries. Gambling. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be dismissed. Uh, diminished. Diminished. Gone. Bye. See you. Maybe even inheritance money. Bye. See you. But, there's a but. He that gathereth by labor shall increase. The Bible speaks about vain labors, vain money. Vain is, again, lottery, maybe an inheritance. Solomon will speak against inheritance by the time we get through his books. You don't know what kind of idiot you're going to leave your money to. That idiot may blow all the money. Labor. Putting your money in the stock market is not labor. Matter of fact, it may be a loss. Just ask those who put their money in, in the, when the, the Great Depression started. How about that one? Hope. Hope. Romans 8, 24, Ephesians 2, 12, 1 Thessalonians 2, 19, and Titus 2, 13, defer, make it the heart sick. Oh, every day the Lord doesn't come. Huh? What is your hope? It better be the Lord Jesus Christ and what he wants in his will. But when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Not the tree of life, a tree of life. When Jesus Christ comes, that's life. There'll be no death. How about that? Ooh, I, I, I'm, I'm the manager in my company. Yeah, and there's probably 16 other guys under you on their way coming up with knives and guns and, and, and all kinds of violence to take you down. Whoso, anybody, despises. Matthew 2, 1 through 8, verse 12 and 16. Whoso despiseth the word shall be destroyed. They won't listen to, they won't listen to you witness to them. They'll be destroyed, condemned, John chapter 3 says. But he that feareth the commandment, Old Testament, shall be rewarded. How's that sound? eternal life how about the commandment go ye in all the world and preach the gospel get rewarded with crowns how about that the law of the wise is a fountain of life to depart from the snares of death you know what our wise parents and grandparents and great-grandparents used to tell us? Look both ways before I cross the road. That was a law in my house. If I didn't obey that law, there was consequences on my hanging. Not wise today. Expect a vehicle to travel over 25, 35 miles per hour, come to a complete dead stop because you can just walk out in the middle of the road. Really? Somebody didn't study the braking and distance as I had to study when I went and got my license. I had to know braking distance, how long it would take me to react. The law of the ways. There, there are speed limits out there set by people because they know the circumstances of that area. It has to be a certain speed limit. 
But even still, when you're told that you can go 65, you still got to realize there may be deer, there may be a breakdown, there may be something. You still got to use diligence. Solomon's setting out laws and, and, and ideas and commandments and proverbs because of what he's learned through his life, what his father has learned, what his grandfather has learned, what God has shown him with the wisdom. Good understanding giveth favor. Simple. But the way of transgressors is hard. Mark, Matthew 11.30. Acts 2.47 and 5.13. You know, the transgression thing, oh, it's hard to be a Christian. No, because you don't know. You don't understand. It's not. It's easy. It's wonderful. I advise you to come over onto this side. Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, plain and simple. But... A fool, which is not a prudent man, layeth upon his folly. Where are we? Open, layeth open up his folly. Doesn't think. Jumps right into it. Open, not closed. Now he just goes right in through. Doesn't realize, you know, he may be walking through a door where there's a big pit. Maybe walking through a door that he shouldn't be walking through. A wicked messenger falleth into mischief. But a faithful ambassador is health. 2 Corinthians 5.12 And when you're dealing with other nations, when you send somebody out to your troops, if he's if he's wicked, you got trouble. He may not tell exactly what you said. Ambassador, that's somebody you send out to other nations. He better be a good ambassador. He better be looking out for the nation of both he's dealing with. Bible calls us ambassadors. Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuses instruction. Not so in America. We'll even give you a high school diploma that you can't read. That's what the Bible says. The poverty and shame is coming to those who are living in the word right. But he that regardeth reproof shall be honored, not in America. When you tell someone, listen, you're doing wrong, and you listen to them, and you take heed, God will honor that. But you keep on going about you. There are tons of churches today, poverty and shame. They, they say they're rich, the Bible says, but they're not. They're wretched, miserable, blind. But they won't listen to the Bible. Matter of fact, they'll change the word, and they despise the word that we've already read about. The desire accomplished, finish what you started, is sweet to the soul. Read what Paul wrote in Second Timothy chapter four about his departure. Do you know the word "but"? Because the next word is "but." Two hundred and forty-five times in the Book of Proverbs alone. 3,994 times in the Bible. But it is an abomination to fools to depart from evil. From a guy who has succeeded in what he has set his goals to do, the contrast is a fool who will not depart from sin.
And when you go out witnessing, you'll see more people who are fools who will not depart from sin than those that will complete what they do, set out to do. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise. There you go. We talked about the other night, uh, fool. Let's see. Somebody, where he, uh, he walks with vain persons. I thought it was last night. But we've already read when somebody walks with vain persons. Bible's telling you find someone who's wise and walk with them. Mark turned out to be a, a good companion that, that Paul said when, when he was hated by Paul and didn't want to be you. But a companion of fools shall be destroyed. How do you see that verse? Let me just give you an illustration. You got four girls. I'll say teenagers, young ladies. One is interested when you're telling them about Jesus. The three others are not. The fourth one will walk away unsaved because of the other three. Now, if she were to tell her friends, move on, I'm going to talk, and then there's hope. But if she leaves with her friends, she's a fool. That could be male or female. But a companion of fools shall be dis destroyed. 1 Corinthians 15, 31, 2 Corinthians 6, 14, Romans 12, 14. Evil pursueth sinners. Imagine seeing a guy who, who, who's, who's sinning and, and here comes evil chasing him down the road. That's what your horror movies are based upon. But, here's the but, to the righteous good shall be repaid. God will reward you. For what you do for him. God will give evil upon a sinner. You know that, that verse in Isaiah that God created evil, I think it is. I may be, I may be mis misquoting that verse. Evil is a reward of a sinner. Evil is something given out by Satan. I got evil from God. No, you didn't. You got exactly what you deserve for your sin. Outside the mercy and grace of God. You may not get full evil. You may not get the evil. Maybe God will give you good. You better thank him and praise him. A good man leaveth inheritance to his children's children. You got to be right, though. Because we're going to, we, like I said, as we go on with, with Solomon, we're going to find sometimes, you know what? You don't know what kind of dummy that kid's going to be. Solomon's own son destroyed Israel. That never got back yet. And wealth of, a, of the sinner... Is laid up for the just. Zechariah 14, 14, Luke 19, 26. You say, well, how does the just get it? I work for a sinner. I know by the company I work for, they're not saved. They pay me. God makes them pay me. I'm just. 
I take their money that they send. I get it and I give it to the Lord. Can you imagine God calling up these companies before the great white throne judgment and say, this person that is my son, adopted, who lives on the Lord Jesus Christ and say, who witnessed to your employees, but this guy worked for your company. Had you believed in Jesus Christ as your Savior, this guy that he gave all the money that he had to me and for missionaries would have been accounted to you, but you want to remain in your sin. I mean, I believe if you have a saved employer, and when he pays you what you deserve, and you take your money and you tithe and give to missionary, I believe somehow that that employer gets the benefit too of what you're doing. Maybe. But if you're not saved, it comes out to be a loss. Much food is the tillage of the poor. and find my note here. Gathered with care. Little is much. Work hard. Because their livelihood depends on it. A poor man is not going to go out there and put one seed in the ground and then, okay, wait for, you know, the harvest. Man, when he's going to put his life into it, he's going to weed, he's going to do... Uh, listen, I'm not that good of a gardener, but if my life came down to it, I would be much tillage, much work. But there is that is destroyed for want of judgment. He that spareth his rod hateth, hateth his son. Hateth his son. Don't you tell God that you love your child and you don't correct him. The Bible says, let's read it again, he that spareth his rod hated, you never corrected your child or children, you do not love them. Don't say you do. God will charge you as a liar. Don't say it. Fight with God or you got a problem with it. That's what it says. I don't correct enough. But he that loveth him chases him be between be times, often and early. I'm telling you right now, don't you dare. You'll stand at either judgment, saved or lost. Say you love your child and, and you don't punish them. You don't correct them. You don't love them. Don't be charged as a liar. Thou shalt not bear false witness. I love my child. And then God brings up the record how many times you corrected him and finds zilch. Then you'll be charged with a liar. what the Bible says maybe you need to repent the righteous eateth to the satisfying of his soul the word of God the bread of life milk honey but the belly of the wicked shall want Luke 16 Haggai 1 6. You know what the wicked wanted? He wanted at least a tip of water for his tongue. Never mind a steak. Meanwhile, the, the, the Lazarus ate from the garbage cans. Now he's seated he see in glory. See, when, when the Bible speaks about eating, it's not just. 
hamburgers and steak and pork chops and all that. It's the word. It's devoured upon God. You know, the Bible says, you know, Jesus said, who eats my flesh and, and drinks my blood. Now, some idiot takes that literal. No, that's, that's enjoying Jesus. That's being satisfied with the word, with Jesus. As much as you would have whatever food you like. If, if you were reading your Bible and you just started and somebody put down a plate of your everything that's your favorite food exactly how you like it exactly with the condiments that go with it would you set aside the Bible to eat the meal or would you set the meal off the side till you were finished with eating that's that's the choice